Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video tutorial, we are going to talk about SDS pH, sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, okay, which is also known as sodium lauryl sulfate, okay, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, sodium dodecyl sulfate SDS or sodium lauryl sulfate SLS, okay, but mostly known as the SDS pH. So simply, I may write it in here. This is all about SDS page. It's very commonly used uh, separation technique. A uh, very commonly used separation technique for separating mixture of proteins based on their molecular weight, based on their size. Okay. Now the question is: uh, In the last video, we have talked about the agarose gel electrophoresis, the gel electrophoresis for the DNA separation. Okay. Uh, we can separate the DNA fragments based on their length using poly uh, using agarose gel electrophoresis. And I already told you why we cannot use polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis for DNA separation. If you haven't seen that, you must watch the video, the last video, and you can just search for the polyacry uh, search for the agarose gel electrophoresis, and you can get the video. I told you that uh, for the gel electrophoresis purpose, whether it's a DNA gel electrophoresis or protein gel electrophoresis, the idea is the simple. The basic principle is the simple. We have to have a matrix material. The matrix material can be made up with agarose or polyacrylamide which are you know polysaccharides the polysaccharides must be cross-linked to form pores as i told you earlier the polysaccharides are cross-linked to form pores of different size now if you change the concentration material then the pore size will also vary the pore size will also change okay so in case of polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis which is used for protein separation uh, uh, concentration of 6% to 15% of uh, polyacrylamide to prepare the gel depending upon the type of protein mass that we want to separate okay so now what what is the idea here we use a particular um, concentration of polyacrylamide and we heat it at 40 degrees Celsius temperature we allow uh, them to be cooled down at a lower temperature once it's cooled down it is forming a solid semi solid a uh, gel like structure that is known as the SDS page that is in this case known as the, the page polyacrylamide gel. So once the polyacrylamide gel is formed as I told you earlier also polyacrylamide gel is formed which formed a, a network of small pores okay. So now the small pores are created it is filled with small pores. Now that pore have different size limits okay. Now proteins the mixture of proteins some of the proteins may be big some of the proteins may be small. Now think about the small proteins, small proteins can easily pass through the pore, but the bigger proteins cannot pass through the pore. So there is a hindrance, there is an inhibition of movement depending upon the size of the, uh, of the polyacrylamide gel that is created. And based on this changing pore size and resistance of the gel, uh, the proteins of different size migrate to different distance in the gel. Okay. So let me erase this. This was for the DNA. So let me erase this and I am going to show you for that. Okay. So the idea is the same like the agarose gel electrophoresis. We, we have prepared the gel with wells. How we create the wells? When we heat uh, the polyacrylamide with the help of uh, with adding buffer at 40 degrees Celsius, then the liquid version of that we put it into a gel casting plate. Uh, it's, a, it's, a like, it's like a mold. And when we uh, pour it, we also put a comb. This is a comb, okay? Now, generally for, for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, the comb, generally 7 or 8 plate comb is used, okay? Where 8 of these small gaps will be created. Once the gel solidifies, we take the comb up. So, we have small pores created. Those are known as the wells. The same name, wells. So, we can use uh, as many wells as we can. Generally, 7 to 8 is uh, the ideal one that we use. So the combs, uh, they create these wells and now we can load our protein into the wells. But remember one important thing which was different from the agarose gel electrophoresis is while uh, we are preparing the polyacrylamide gel for uh, the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis for protein separation, we uh, pour the polyacrylamide gel, I mean polyacrylamide in the liquid version in the gel casting plate or mold. And then we also put some, you know, distilled water on the top. Why we put that or sometimes buffer on the top, 
of that gel uh, even before it solidifies. The reason be behind is that while uh, the matrix of the polyacrylamide are being solidified and forming the pores, we do not want that polyacrylamide gel to be in contact with oxygen that is present in the air. Okay? So, we either need to do that in the anaerobic environment or we can simply separate the surface of the acrylamide with water uh, from the air with the help of a barrier of water. That is what we do. It is very important. So, generally the gel solidifies within 30 to 40 minutes, it gets solidified. And once the solidification is done, then we just uh, take out all the water and buffer, whatever we use, we just separate it out and then we have a clean gel ready. Because if the oxygen is in contact with the acrylamide while it is solidifying, it was solidifying, in that case what it can do is that it can uh, alter the pore forming capability of the polyacrylamide. So, the oxidation of polyacrylamide uh, interferes with the formation of matrix by the polyacrylamide and the matrix formation is very very crucial because that is the only principle with which we can separate the fragments right with, with which we can separate the proteins uh, from one another based on the pore size. So, we need to make sure that oxygen is in is not in contact. So, that is one thing about the casting of the gel preparation of the gel we do that and remember like every single type of gel electrophoresis we have one well allotted for loading known protein sequences with known molecular weight so that we get what is known as a ladder. Uh, ladder means we have uh, the proteins at different molecular weight present in different positions and then we have unknown samples loaded in different wells. We will compare the position of the unknown sample bands with that of the known ladder bands and by comparing them we can easily find out uh, the molecular weight of our target or unknown uh, protein. Okay? That is why ladder is loaded. So, that is all about this side of the gel preparation. Now, the second side of this is the idea of the idea of this gel electrophoresis, the acrylamide electrophoresis. Now, remember the proteins, I told you the gel electrophoresis is always using the uh, properties of charge and uh, size to separate molecules. So, for proteins, uh, Charge, we cannot guarantee about a charge because proteins have different kind of amino acids. So, there is no fixed charge. For DNA, we can easily guarantee because DNA are all, always negatively charged. So, we know all the DNA negatively charged. So, we do not need to put any charging material. The DNA always move towards anode because DNA is uh, positive, negatively charged. It will move towards the positively charged part. Okay? Uh, so, so, they will always move towards anode. That is fine. But for proteins, there is no fixed charge to it. And sometimes the proteins are so complex, they are fold, they are present in the folded state. Most of the times the protein that we get and aqua, are, they are present in the folded state. Even though we heat them and we, we try to denature them in different process, but they are mostly in the folded state. So, what we can do, we need to unfold the protein. So, generally there are different approach, heating is there, changing of pH is there, those things are there. But uh, sometimes the, the folding, uh, the, the structures are complicated based on the disulfide bonds. Remember the two sulfur, they are creating a disulfide bridge and bonds between amino acids in the proteins. So, we need to break the disulfide bond. We use a reducing agent. Okay? Beta markapto ethanol. Beta markapto ethanol is a reducing agent which reduces this disulfide bond to SH. So, the bond is broken. So, uh, after using the beta markup to ethanol, almost the primary structure of the protein can be obtained. Okay? So, now we have a protein in its primary structure that means only the amino acids are linked together like a chain. right? But still, there are different amino acids. Some part is positively charged, some are negatively charged, some are polar, some are non-polar, things are there. So, it is a huge problem for separating proteins without a fixed charge. So, we need to use a charge agent or charging agent for the protein separation using polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and that is SDS. SDS is also a strong reducing agent and also it can as a negatively negative charge uh, throughout the protein. So, let us say this is the primary uh, structure of the protein and SDS is filled, SDS is attached to it and SDS means this is negatively charged. So, SDS binding to the primary uh, structure of the protein makes the protein negatively charged. 
so all the proteins are made into negatively charged structures now and they are linear so they are not folded anymore so this is our prerequisite before loading that protein into the well of the SDS page this is why we call it SDS page because SDS is an important component for this this is not a native polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis there are process known as native gel electrophoresis where we uh, try to separate proteins based on its native structure without disrupting any bonds without breaking any bonds without making it linearized we just um, use uh, as uh, the, the protein as its natural content or native form uh, for the electrophoresis but this one is uh, the conventional mode where we disrupt the structures disrupt the i mean uh, reduce the disulfide bonds and then we tag it with sds we make it into a negatively charged form and then we load it into the well so once we form all the proteins in this in this category in this form some of the proteins are small some of them are big some of them are even smaller so think about these three different proteins all of them have the negative charge same negative charge now this negative charge is proportional to the num to the number of amino acids they have or number of peptide bonds they have the more lengthy the chain the more negative charge they have okay that's one more thing but apart from that the smaller uh, peptide here can move further because of the pore the pore is of limited size small can easily move through that pore if their movement will be faster there is no friction so the small will move fastest this will move fastest this is moderate and this is slowest so between these three different proteins uh, or peptide this will reach the topmost this medium and this is the top one so if i just load them uh, what we are going to achieve let's say we are going to see uh, let me draw it with the blue color because we are drawing the proteins in blue so let's say this is this is where we get one band for this one we get another band for this one so let's say this is x y z so we get the z band for this one x for this one and let's say y for this one so this is how we get the bands okay the small one reaches furthest why because when we load the gel and we put the electrode again as the proteins are negatively charged remember they will migrate towards the plus end and plus end means anode so they will migrate towards anode so as they are migrating towards anode and uh, we need to run this gel electrophoresis for some time like 40 minutes 50 minutes uh, is not enough like the like like dna or other cases for uh, this polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis we need to run it for four to five hours sometimes six hours even so running it for that much uh, long time then we stop the power supply and we are going to see the position of the proteins by adding again a protein binding dye okay for agarose gel electrophoresis for dna electrophoresis we use a dye dna binding dye in this case we use a protein binding dye and the protein binding dye that we use is in blue color known as kumasi blue this is one example kumasi blue double o double s i e at the end so that's how because it's the we use kumasi blue kumasi blue dye so kumasi blue dye is used at the end of the sds page we take this uh, plate out and we also take the uh, gel out with the spatula we can handle the gel because it's well enough it's st steady enough and then we are going to dye it with kumasi blue and we can visualize the presence of the protein samples and when we see the presence we can also compare it with the ladder sequence so that we can obtain uh, the molecular weight approximate molecular weight of the protein in this case it must not be like this 100 200 600 i just draw it for the dna ladder but any molecular weight that let's say uh, we are starting from we can write something like the smallest molecular weight let's say 2 kilo dalton uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we can get to know the uh, size of the protein based on the size we can separate them like that now one more thing that i must say is uh, just like the agarose gel electrophoresis while uh, you know before running the gel uh, we need to put this whole gel into a gel casting chamber where we also uh, need to load a buffer now the buffer that we use here the buffer that we use here may be of different kind you know we cannot use water in there i already told you why we cannot use water because of the conductance water does not have any electrolytes apart from the hydrogen and hydroxyl so there is no conductance like that 
so we need to use a buffer where ions are present salt ions are present and based on the different uh, intensity of the salt ions uh, the movement of the protein and dna uh, depends on that okay and one more thing one more question you may ask like what kind of voltage that we use generally in this case when we tag it with minus and plus both electrodes what kind of voltage we are expecting the voltage that generally we are expecting here is 2.5 milliampere most of the time for proteins which are bigger one like antibody so if you are taking antibody and looking at a mixture of antibody trying to separate a mixture of antibody in that case we need to use the voltage of 2.5 milliampere uh, for separation the current 2.5 milliampere is the current to separate uh, those antibodies from one another and separating that right so this is the overall idea of the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis so remember the proteins always come up with the three dimensional shape fully folded form we need to make it unfolded then we also need to disrupt the disulfide bonds then we need to tag sds so that every single polypeptide chain is linearized with negatively charged content then we load them and the buffer should be used and the buffers ph normally in that case can be maintained near basic like it depends on a lot of things it's not a fixed value but as i'm telling one example of separating the antibodies in that case the ph will be 8 or 8.5 ph is maintained with 2.5 millivolt uh, milliamp uh, is the current to separate the mixture of antibodies from one another so that is regarding uh, the sds page or sds polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis uh, remember in some cases we may use a different gradient gel normally i told you the gel is either it's a fixed value either six percent seven percent eight percent ten percent or fifteen percent fixed value but some cases the gel is prepared in a gradient fashion then some part of the gel is 6, then 7, then 8, then 10, then 12. So it's gradually increasing in concentration or gradually decreasing in concentration. That kind of gel is also used. Those are known as gradient gel electrophoresis. Those are required for different purposes. We'll discuss that in some other video. But this is where the normal conventional SDS page is used to separate the proteins based on their size. Now the big question is, we can separate protein based on their size from a mixture. Now think about a protein mixture where the proteins are of same molecular weight. It may happen that two proteins have same molecular weight. So how can we separate those proteins who have same molecular weight? That's a big problem. To solve that problem, we need to use two properties rather than one. In this case, we only use the molecular weight or the size of protein to separate that. But we need to use another technique where we can use both the size of the protein as well as the charge of the protein to separate the proteins from a mixture that is known as two dimensional gel electrophoresis or 2D gel electrophoresis. We'll be talking about the 2D gel electrophoresis later on, okay, in the other video. So that's all about the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or SDS page principle and SDS page working principle application advantages and disadvantages. I believe you get to know this. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that. Thank you. Bye.